Get the stuff out of the way. Local Prepper, we are glad to have you tonight. And uh, kind of for the people that don't know who you are, kind of introduce yourself, tell them part of your backstory, uh, what you've got going on and stuff like that. Make, okay. make some stuff up if you want to. Make uh, I can make some stuff up now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, you know, uh, uh, I, I started prepping in, uh, 2008, uh, and, uh, I didn't actually know what I was doing for a long time. Uh, and, uh, then, uh, around, um, I guess, uh, uh, 2019, uh, I actually started several other different channels on YouTube and my girlfriend was like, Hey, you really know a lot about this prepping stuff. You really ought to start doing a channel about that. So that, that's what I did. Uh, and, uh, it's just kind of, it's growing. It's little by little, you know, it's, it's the YouTube thing. It takes forever to, it takes about 15 years to grow anything unless you like do something incredibly stupid and then you're instantly famous. Um, <laughs> but you know, it, that's the truth. That's the truth. But, uh, you know, the, uh, and, and, and you know, so I kind of made it my mission. I, I got, I got, uh, you know, I, I've got a military background and, and, uh, I, I got tired of hearing about how, back when I was in special forces, you know, that, uh, uh, that, that people were just selling stuff. And you know, I started looking at the prices of stuff and I, I didn't like it at all. Uh, and I, I just started, uh, making, making a lot of my own stuff and showing people how to make it, uh, and showing them that there are ways that you can, you can do the same thing, uh, for so much less and, and then teaching them how to spot scams and, and making sure that they know these things, you know, um, you know, the, the, the overarching goal, you know, it's like they say everybody's or every prepper's goal is to become a homesteader. Yep. Uh, but the truth is, is many cannot do it. They just can't. Like right now, I live in an apartment. You know, I live in the middle of a town and there's I don't have a yard. So that means that I, I can't have a crop. I could grow stuff in the windows and things like that, but I can't have a crop. So I have to rely on what we would consider Western uh, uh, prepping techniques. You know, um, th th things, things of that nature. And then it just kind of just like morphed out making friends and and uh, doing deals. And, and uh, the next thing you know, I'm on somebody's YouTube channel going, hey, I'm local prepper. <laughs> so now now, you know, my backstory. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I mean, you can prep. And that's, that's the thing. I mean, you can prep no matter where you're at. If you're in an apartment, if you're on, you know, a third of an acre lot, if you're you know, if you've got five acres or if you've got 5,000 acres, you can still do some kind of prepping stuff. And yep. and it's funny you talk about, you know, blowing up on YouTube. I, I've, I've watched one guy, and I won't name him, but he really calls a lot of these guys out. He's like, you see all these big YouTube guys that, that start a channel and then they grow to like, you know, 500,000 subscribers. He's like, honestly, and it's all these special ops guys. It's like, you know, I was Delta Force. I was a SEAL mm -hmm. and this and that. Those guys are really government shields, honestly. I mean, mm -hmm. there's they're propped up by the algorithm and stuff like that. I that's really the only way that or take 15 years to grow a channel. So a lot of those guys, when they first came out, I started watching them. I'm like, man, that's pretty cool. But it's all a big sob. They're kind of mm -hmm. feeding you stuff. They looks good on the surface, but when you really get down to it, it's like, man, this guy's full of crap. So. Yeah, I mean, uh, don't get me wrong. They've got skills. I used to work with them. My my, my last uh, my last posting was with Marine Special Operations Command. So you know, I do I do have a background, but I don't bring that into this world because that's like that's like eh, I'm going to push that part of my life out so that I can bring this part of my life in. Yeah, you know, uh, and uh, but and some of them do have skills. Some of them are legitimate guys. You know, a lot of us went through. A lot of people go through the same types of training. Uh, and, um, you know, one of those is survival skills and then they just bring that into the world. And, you know, one of the things about the military, and I won't say it's a problem is that it's like any other job. If you, if you were in the computer industry for 20 years and you retired and decided you needed to go back to work and the only thing that you could find was to be a Walmart greeter, you would try to figure out a way to be, to use a computer to become a good Walmart greeter. Yeah. You know, and that's really all they're doing. I, I just I just don't like the ones that are that take advantage of people is all I'm saying. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And some of them, some of them are selling awful high priced crappy products that I've seen. Yeah. Well, you know, here's the thing. You know, if, if you've got the credentials, you get the endorsements. 
Yeah. You know, I've, I've, I got radio companies trying to send me radios to, to promote. And I just tell them how bad the radios are and they keep sending me radios, you know, <laughs> it's, it's kind of weird. It's kind of weird, but you know, with, with certain companies, uh, they, they know what you're doing. They, they, they research you and find out what you're about and, you know, they're willing to support you to that level is, is yeah. all it really comes down to. Oh yeah. And I, Going with Shelly and I, the, the companies that we promote are companies that we've contacted. You know, no, the, the companies that we're promoting are companies that I've contacted myself, use their products, just like Backmaster. I contacted Backmaster and was like, hey, I want a chamber sealer because we butcher, you know, tons of animals every year. Yeah. Like, I want a commercial chamber sealer. I'm tired of these stupid food savers going out in a year. Yeah. And uh, they're like, hey, we'll send you one. Try it out. Tell us what you think about it. Mm-hmm. I mean, the thing shows up. It's a beast. That thing weighs over 200 pounds. Wow. I mean, it's it's a legit commercial deal. It will do a uh, 16 by 18 inch bag is the biggest wow. bag size it'll do. Uh, I've never had a problem with it. They sent me a bunch of their butchering knives. Their butchering knives are just as good as Victor Knox, and they're cheaper. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, I use I use that stuff all the time now, and I'm going to stand behind it. And I mean, we've sold some of their stuff, and everybody that's bought it has seemed to have liked it. That, yeah. Also, Signature Solar. I mean, Signature Solar. Mm-hmm. I contacted them, and uh, they're a great company to work with. We're working on some projects with them right now. So that yeah. that is, I'm I'm not, and I've had some people send me send me some stuff. I had one company send me a pair of uh, like knockoff muck boots. And I wore them for a little while, and they're kind of trash. I'm like, these things are just not worth anything. Of course, yeah. mutton, boot, mutton boots are crap right now anyway. I wear those things out in six months if you're really using them. Yeah, I got you. So, yeah. That Signature Solar, is that is that a, uh, the, the company that does the well stuff too? I don't think they have any well stuff. But they okay. could. I haven't seen. I wish any. they did have some well stuff. Mm. Yeah. I don't know if they've got, I don't think they do. There's another company that I was talking to, but uh, that does a lot of uh, solar wells. Mm-hmm. And when I was talking to them, they're more based for the contractors, you know, as far okay. as a well, a well contractor, not real homeowner friendly kind of thing. Yeah. I, th- I think that every house, I think it should be like someone call the government and tell them we should, if you own a well, it should have its own solar system. Yeah. Because when you live in the country, I, I, have, I have property in North Carolina that it's kind of like my bug out location. And, you know, it's if, if you live on, if you live on, a, uh, on, you know, on the power grid and you have a well, when you're out of power, you're out of water. Yeah. Is that easy? So I think I think they should all be on solar. They should all have their own little solar system. Yeah, for sure. I mean, and that that's the big thing. A lot of people. And another thing about the solar, like. Kentucky, they stopped a lot of the credits for solar a uh, year or so ago. And uh, all these farmers were putting these huge, big solar arrays out because they were getting a huge, big tax credit. And some of these yeah. other people, and they're like, oh, man, I've got solar if the grid goes down. And I'm like, Where, where's all your batteries to store all this energy? And they're like, well, I don't have that, but I've still got solar. I can still do this. I'm like, dude, you can do it when the sun when the sun's shining, <laughs> but at night you don't have any kind of storage capacity whatsoever. Yeah, you you you're you're selling that stuff back to the power company. You just don't know it. Yeah. So. Yeah, but I mean, it, it, it you should. I mean, I think everybody that has a well should have a backup solar pump for it. Or shoot, just go ahead and run the thing on solar as it as it stands right now and save some money on your mm-hmm. electric bill. Yeah, that that's that's my next plan to have the uh, to get my pump or my my well one hundred percent solar. Cause that's what I used to do. I had like, I did a little, uh, an experiment years ago and it lasted like forever. I had literally had to have the batteries towed it off. I used to be able to buy car batteries, use car batteries at the junkyard for $10 yeah. a pop. Yeah. And, uh, then I, all I did was just wire them all together and, and ran, ran an entire solar system out there. And whenever the hurricanes would come through and take all the power out, I used to run my entire living room, you know, keep, it's what I, I, I called it my keep them from going crazy solar system. <laughs> Yeah, I had I had ten uh, 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 front prong batteries wired together. Uh, was it uh, 400, uh, 400 watt or four one hundred watt panels? Uh, and um, and I would uh, run what was it? Uh, I, I ran the uh, the dish dish TV, 
the fan in the window, uh, a 54 inch large screen TV, uh, and the Xbox. Yeah. And uh, that kept everybody from going crazy. <laughs> but I, I could run that for days on end, no problem whatsoever. And everybody was like, "Oh, you shouldn't do that. Those batteries aren't designed to do that." I was like, "Yeah, I mean, if I if I touch the touch these things are the wrong thing, I'm probably going to not be living anymore." Oh, yeah. the amp coming off those car batteries. But as far as as far as as uh, 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 what is it? Uh, amp hours, yeah. amp hours, and amp hour. It's that easy. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, where I'm sitting at in my office right now, I'm running a uh, 12 volt RV fan like you would find in a camper, and then my recessed lights in here are running off 12 volt, and I'm running off its uh, Patriot Power battery. Uh, there you so go. It, yeah, so I'm running that right now, and then if I need to charge the batteries, I can stick a solar panel out there and charge the batteries on it, and that's that's what I use in this office, and it puts off plenty of light, plenty of air flowing around, and I'm like, that's. That's the, the ticket right there. I, I've been talking for a year or better now that I want to build a bunkhouse onto the shop. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was talking to Signature about it. I've got to run uh, new wire to have a bigger service for my shop if we add the bunkhouse. And I'm to the point, I know what it's going to cost to run new wire and wire my bunkhouse. And for about, for probably another $1,000 more, I can put a complete solar system in just to run that bunkhouse. So that's probably what we're going to wind up doing is having the bunkhouse totally off grid, just that part yeah. of the shop. So, Shelly, are you watching comments? I can't hardly read them. I am watching comments. All right. <laughs> so, LP, what else have you got going on? You're, you're, you're all over every time I pull up YouTube because that, that's what I do during the day while I'm working. I'm a contractor, so I'm working. I've got my earbud, earbud, earbuds in listening to stuff and it's like crap you're like doing three and four times a day stuff coming out uh yeah sometimes i mean i, I try to keep it busy uh most of the times um uh, actually i actually make more videos than you see uh, because i've got a youtube membership so i've got to make those guys videos too just for them uh but you know uh, I'm, I'm i try to keep it uh as busy as possible uh you just getting the word out about preparedness you know the world that we live in is pretty uncertain these days and, uh, you know, we're, we're, uh, I, I would like to be able to educate, you know, the younger generation, but they don't like listening to us old gomers for some reason. <laughs> uh, and, you know, and I don't know why, but you know, it's, it's, it is, it is what it is. And I found that, uh, just, uh, just talking as much as possible, uh, you can get more people to listen. Yeah. Oh yeah. And, uh, heat for that bunkhouse. We're going to put a wood stove in there. If nice. Asking about, and I've already right. got, I've already got the wood stove already bought. I bought it a couple of years ago. Tractor Supply had them on clearance at like half off, and I was like, "Ooh, I don't really need this right now, but it's an eight hundred dollars stove for four hundred. Yeah. I can't pass that deal up." No, that's pretty uh, incredible. Yeah, and it is. I mean, getting back. I mean, yeah, younger people. I mean, I'm forty six, and. So I don't consider myself too awful old, but some of the younger people won't listen anymore. It's just like pulling teeth with them sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, Adam, any idea how big a solar system? <sighs> it all depends, honestly. I mean, get a hold of me, and uh, I can get the guys at Signature Solar to take a look at it. They can build a system for you. And uh, But, yeah, get a hold of me, and we can talk about that later. It, it all depends on what you want to do. If you're just going to run – if you want to run just like your refrigerator, a freezer, a window unit for air conditioning and a few things, that's going to be a lot smaller system than if you're going to run a whole house. So, I'm looking up. I was watching a video that Signature Solar put out. And um, hold on a minute. Let's, so they've got this 18K hybrid inverter. And... Um, so they were running, they had like this demo thing and they had an outside air condition, you know, like, like a regular, not like a window air conditioner, but a regular air conditioner running with a washer and dryer, a stove, a microwave and a TV. And it ran all of that stuff. And right now they've got it on sale for like $5,000, which I mean, I don't, I, I know very little about this, but it really impressed me <laughs> that they were running all the things that they were running with that, I'm sure that you could um, run just about anything with that inverter. Yeah. yeah. Here, Forrest. 
Uh, LP, tell us, what is your advice for someone just getting in, just getting started into prepping? Give them, give them, a, give them a little bit. Of course. Do you, is there another chat? Because I'm looking at the one on YouTube. Are we going out someplace else? We're going well, on you're pulling in chats from all three from. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I thought I was going crazy. <laughs> no, okay. No, uh, yeah. Well, see, one, you can prepare. Okay. I don't care what your income is. I, I've worked with one of, one of my favorite people that I ever worked with had like almost no money to to do anything with. That was their biggest problem. They wanted to prepare, but they just had zero dollars in their budget. And, you know, you can, you can, you can tell them to, okay, you need to, if you can afford to drink a beer, you can afford to prep. If you can afford to smoke a cigarette, you can afford to prep, you know? Um, but there's an easier way to do it. A lot of people don't even think about it. So one of the, when I started preparing, my biggest hurdle was filling shelves because I didn't know how to can, I didn't do any. I mean, I just I just wanted to be ready for something if something happened. And so um, I came up with what I call the six can method. And every time I go to the store, I don't do it as much now. But every time I would go to the store, I didn't care if I was going to, you know, pick up whatever for whomever. It did not matter. Whatever store I went into. I always got six cans of something. And sometimes it would be beans. Sometimes it would be corn. Sometimes it would be peas. Sometimes it would be canned meat. You know, I always got six cans of something. Uh, and then after a month of doing that, your shelves fill up pretty quickly. Yeah. You don't even know you're doing it. You know, and back then, you know, a can of this and a can of that was anywhere from 35 cents to 55 cents. 55 cents was expensive in 2019, you know, in 2008, it was, it was, it was nothing. Uh, and, uh, and nowadays you can still get canned goods for less than a dollar per can. Yeah. So if you get six cans, you're going to spend $6. If you do that, every time you come through this, if you, every time you go to Wally world, you're going to fill your shelves up pretty quickly. Yeah. You know, and then you're going to then what happens is, is your brain rewards you with a little shot of dopamine every time you do that, you know, because you've accomplished something. Whether you in the beginning, you don't know. It's almost like working out. You know, you don't know that you're accomplishing anything because you don't see it. But one day you look in the mirror and there's like maybe maybe you're a little skinnier or maybe your muscles are a little bit bigger or maybe there's you know, maybe your eyes are a little clearer. You know, it's the same thing when you start looking at those shelves. You know, uh, you look at yourself and like, oh, we there's a case of food there. How that happened? It's only been like a week. Yeah. You know, it's only been two weeks. How is there a case of food there? How is this? And then you get hit with that little shot of dopamine and then you just keep going. You keep doing the same thing over and over and over and over until one day you look and it's like, I need more shelves. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, yeah. and that, it, that's my that's my first recommendation to anybody who's a brand new prepper, because you can do it. We are, you know, preppers aren't just, hey, let's go and, you know, I try to make people understand that we used to like, I love to can. Okay. Uh, to me, it's just this magical thing that makes food last forever. Um, but the thing is, is it's not 100% necessary in this day and age because we have the advent of modern canning practices. You know, the, the companies are doing it for us. So when you start, let them do it for you. Okay. Until you can know how to do it yourself, because that's going to create long term or longevity in your in your preparedness. All right. Because when those cans are empty, all you can really do is melt them down and make toys with them, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and that's only if they use the good aluminum. You know? <laughs> um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's a uh, you know, we, we have we learned to can and we have so many canning uh, jars, canning supplies, uh, because we're going to reuse them in the future when you start prepping. It, thinking about that is great, but you're not gonna you're not gonna make any progress that way. You know, you're probably going to waste more food than you thought. You're probably gonna screw it up 20 times before you get it right. You know, well, if you just stick with your regular canned goods for a certain period of time, you can build that shelf. You know, and then hey, it's time to learn how to can it. You know, it's time to learn how to can. It's time to it's time to learn how to process meats. You know, it, it's time to do the things that. 
that uh, you know our great our great grandparents had to do, you know, because that that's 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 your uh, it's it's how you grow, you know, it's that transition. You're actually making like that very first step. I think canning is like the very first step uh, when you uh, when you start to make those uh, that transition into I want to be a homesteader. Yeah. You know, because once you buy the jars, now now you need a place to keep them. You know, yeah. you need a reason to use them. You know, um, so that I, I think that would be the the initial advice I'd give a brand new prepper. Yeah, and that, and I mean, going along with buying the canned goods and everything, I know how much I can make is doing my contracting job th through the day. And I was like, I can make this much money. I know how much my time is worth. It's easier sometimes just to go grab canned stuff as opposed to doing, you know, all the canning and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And I can see that for a lot of people too. And it, you know, buying six cans at a time, a lot of people are, you know, are just scared to death. They're like, I don't know the first move to make. And they're like, I need all this right now. They're just paralyzed mm -hmm. with fear. It's just, you know, start off small, small. You're going to win, you know, the war in inches and not miles. That's right. And Take that first step. You know how to how to eat a whole elephant is one bite at a time. Exactly. And I think that's great advice. You know, buy six cans of stuff, and then you look back and you're like, "Holy crap, I've got six hundred cans or something like that." Yeah. Yeah. When you know you need more shelves, you know you're doing it right. Yeah. Oh yeah, that and you're like, "Ooh, I, I need to take the extra bedroom and start filling." <laughs> <laughs> it's going into the extra bedroom. So, what else? We <clears throat> so the chat's not the chat's not letting me pop the comments up. I'm not sure what's happening. But Jordan O'Neill said, "What is the rate of inflation for solar units over the past five to ten years?" Jason, do you know that? I honestly do not know. Uh, it's probably I don't know. Everything's going up. I'd say it's probably at least twenty percent more than what it was several years ago. Seems like the inflation of everything is about that, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if it's at least 20 percent. Yeah. And, you know, it sucks too because, you know, with with the uh, um, you know, when when products flood a market, they become less expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's just not happening. And I'm seeing I'm seeing that with the portable power systems. Uh, they're get, starting to give away free solar panels. Uh, if you if you uh, uh, look at like uh, what is it? Uh, Pecron, Jackery. Uh, all of the like portable, the portable, portable power, or it's there, the portable yeah. stuff. Uh, they're starting to throw solar panels at you for, for less than a uh, hundred dollars. Uh, yeah. And that's normally the standard for solar panels uh, is basically uh, it's like, it's normally $1 per watt yeah. for any type of uh, uh, solar panel, you know? Uh, and then there's what, I think what we're on like third generation photovoltaic. Uh, so, I mean, you would think that the prices would be going down, but for some reason they're not. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's, uh, I think, I think unfortunately Jordan and Jordan always asks the hard question. She's a smart girl. <laughs> yeah. Well, Ann wants to know, uh, suggest need solar for one room for a freezer and a fridge and a heater for safety. Uh, and the best thing to do, if you can get a hold of me, uh, we can figure some stuff out and then I can get you, you know, the equipment that you're going to need on it. It's, it's kind of hard. We need to sit down and figure out all your wattages and stuff like that, what you're going to need. Cause it all depends, you know, your state, your old school refrigerators with the freezer on top and the refrigerator on the bottom, they take a different, they're, they're, they're different wattage as, as far as power they're going to consume as opposed to like a side by side or a French door. So uh, if you get a hold of me, we can touch base with Signature and figure out exactly what you need. So that's kind of hard. It's one of those things that depends, and I hate telling people that. And there's really no one size fits all in that. So LP, what about uh, what about after you got your six cans and you've got to buy more shells? What what do you think people need to start doing after after they got their food squared away? Because I'm a I'm a food shelter water kind of guy. After you mm -hmm. got that taken care of, it's like where do you go from there? Uh, up, upscaling things, upscaling things. You know, what the three the three pillars that I use are water, food, security in that order. Uh, and uh, you know, a lot of people just kind of ignore the whole water thing. They're they're so used to turn the tap on and it works. Like we started out, you know, if you're if you live in the country and you're on a well and the power goes out, you ain't got no water supply. It's that easy. Um, so 
you know, and, and it always kind of gets me. A lot of homesteaders don't store water. Yeah. You know, they have they have massive. So I got a stream down there and I got a well over there and 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 they say that. And then, well, you ever heard of a bad well before or what they call a summer well? Yeah. You know, they dry up during the summers, <laughs> you know, and, uh, and and it happens. It's like one day you just don't have any water in your well. You know, uh, OK, you got a river. How are you going to get water out of that river? Where is where's your where's your your system to get that water up to your house? You know, do you really plan on living out of five gallon buckets for water? You know, so I always tell people to store water, uh, you know, using that six can method. What I would also do is about uh, um, once a month, I would go. I, I started off buying um, you used to be able to buy one gallon water bottles uh, from the dollar 25 tree store. Uh, and, uh, you used to be able to buy them for, for 99 cents, no problem. And when they had them on sale, you could buy them for 50 cents a bottle. And so I started doing that. And then I would, then it, as I, you know, got, uh, more and more educated on different things, cause there's little quirks to everything, you know, um, Oh, by the way, it's, uh, you know, those are, those are clear bottles and you need to keep them out of the sunlight. So, you know, you need to make sure they don't get hot. They don't get cold. Is it cheap plastic? Did it leach into your water? You know, there's there's a thousand different little things. Uh, but, uh, you know, the the next thing is 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 going to the next level It's going to the next stage. You know, I tell people uh, that uh, they they should probably if especially if they have if they have a basement, they really don't have an excuse. You know, if you have a basement. There is absolutely no reason why you do not have water storage in your basement. Yeah. Not whatsoever. Uh, you know, I uh, I have a um, uh, a 300 gallon tank in my basement. You know, there's lots of companies out there that'll give you good deals on them. Uh, you know, some people like totes. If you can get a tote down to your basement, that'll work real good too. Yeah. You know, because it's dark and it's cool. You're not going to have any algae problems down there. You're not going to have any. You know, you're you just you're just not going to have any problems at all. You know, if you can get it down there. But they there's companies out there that make these. Uh, these water containers, they're basically, they, they come in different sizes, but a lot of them are like 55 gallon jugs or just that made out of they're like pickle barrels. Mm -hmm. you know? uh, if you take it down, clean it out real good. Let it dry out, rinse it out real good. Take it downstairs and fill it up full of water. Get it up. Yeah. The pallets. You can get, you go to the, go to the back of the Walmart and grab a couple of pallets because they're probably trying to throw 10 out right now. Oh yeah. We got, there's a, uh, about an hour away. There's a, uh, uh, they do TV dinners or the freeze, the freeze meals. And they do, uh, they use salted vodka for some of these fish meals, uh, yeah. kind of seafood meals. And I will go get those barrels and man, that salted vodka is the nastiest stuff. I tried just a little bit of it, but, uh, yeah, we, we wash those drums out and I've got four 55 gallon drums sitting in the basement ready to go. Yep. And then of course you'll see when you come down here, we've got, uh, six IBC totes on each side of the shop that are all plumbed and ready to go. That's awesome. That's awesome. I think that's one of the biggest mistakes that a lot of homesteaders make is they just don't, they don't have water on standby. Yeah. You know, there's just, they're just one is none, two is one. They're just, it, they're used to their circumstances or worse. Their daddy didn't do it that way. Yeah. You know, well, you know, your daddy is probably a smart man, but you know what? There's probably somebody smarter than him. So <laughs> there's oh, yeah. always somebody smarter than me. That's for sure. Yeah. And then the whole, you know, one gallon per person per day. That's mm -hmm. that. That's if you're sitting on the couch, not doing anything. Yeah, that, that that's survival. That's what you're supposed to consume. But I always ask a couple of questions like, OK, so how much water did you drink today? Yeah. And people go, huh? You know, I mean, like literally, how much water did you drink today? How many times did you go to the spigot and fill up a glass of a glass of water and drink? And and they no, can normally tell you almost nothing. You know, I mean, unless you're like in construction and you're walking around with like some giant, you know, tote that <laughs> that you bought at the Seven Eleven that you know you have to fill up and fill full of ice every morning. You know. Unless you're walking around with that one gallon, you always see that guy who's walking around with yeah. a gallon of water, you know, and 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 it used to be milk in there, that just, and he knows he's not supposed to do that, but that's all he's got. Yeah, you know, those are the guys that are drinking a gallon of water today, uh, a day, and uh, so that's the first question I ask people is just to think about it logically, and then then I tell them, said, listen, that's that's just what you would you would need uh, in a strenuous environment. You're going to need a lot more than one gallon a day. 
you know, and then you didn't factor in, oh, but I've got all this freeze dried survival food. You know, well, you didn't factor in that now you need water to rehydrate that food. You need water to cook in. You need water to wash your body in. You know, you need you need water to do dishes in, yep. you know, and so one gallon a day just isn't going to cut it, you know, and then now we're going to like now we got to really step it up. We got to go to level three if that's how many levels there are. But uh, now you got to start thinking about like, you know, uh, black water, gray water, catchments, reuse of water, things like that, you know. Uh, but uh, there's it's uh, I, I would think that that would be the next thing. It's just time to time to level up after that, because, you know, when you when you break down water, food and security, we live in a modern world. Shelter is always going to be a thing for us. You know, you, you can you can be a bum on the, if a bum on the street of New York City can find shelter every night in a different place. Yeah, I think we're OK. I think we got shelter covered, you know. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, but uh, if you they, they kind of they kind of trickle down in each one of those categories of water, food and security to different levels of preparedness to different things, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, that's that's what I would do. Oh, yeah. I mean, today I, I didn't do a whole lot today. I did some farm stuff this morning and uh, moving animals. And then we went. uh fishing with my youngest son I went fishing and did a few other things and i've drank a gallon and a half of water today mm-hmm. you know and that's not even really doing a whole lot and the majority of that i drank while i was out moving hay and doing stuff like that mm-hmm. so i, I kind of the bare minimum that i like to tell people is three gallons per person per good day. number that's, and, a, that's a good number and realistically you should probably push that to five if, you, if you've got the storage space for it mm-hmm. And then I figure too with my animals, and I figure my animals in the summertime, uh, we got fifty gallon troughs, and I know I have to fill that trough up, you know, every day, you know, in the summertime. So I figure mm-hmm. fifty gallons a day for the animals on the yeah. load, the load of animals we've got right now. So Bill was wanting to know, uh, Bill, there is a uh, there's a couple different websites. I don't know the calculations on it. I've got it up right here. Do you? Um, So you can get 0.6 gallons of water and one inch of rainfall for every square foot. So if you figure out the square footage, multiply it by 0.6, and then figure out how much rainfall you've got, of course you're going to need one of those little things to tell you how much rainfall you've got. Or you can go online and look at it, I guess. But if you get one inch of rainfall, it's 0.6 times the square footage of whatever area you're wanting to find and that stuff man it does it, it's amazing how much water you can collect off a roof and in that we and have we we have you know back where our pigs are at we have um half of our barn and how big would you say our barn is it's not it's huge pretty, it's 24 by 24 something like that something like that so it would be 12 by 24 and then there's also Um, you know, like a little porch that comes off, but we fill two IBC totes to overflowing every time it rains. That's how we water our pigs. We have that whole rainwater catchment system set up for them. You can get some serious, especially in Kentucky. I mean, there are places in the United States that doesn't have as much rainfall as we have in this area, but you can get some serious water, you know, from that kind of thing. And that's what Mike Shepard, him and Jeanette, that's the only way they have water. And yeah. they are rarely without water because of the amount of rainfall that we get. <clears throat> uh, what water filter to take chemicals out? LP, what's your favorite? Yeah. Um, so getting chemicals out of water is a very serious problem. There, there's no there's no answer to that. There's no filter that can truly break all the chemicals out. You need a reverse osmosis machine if you want to remove chemicals from your water. You know, there, there are chemicals out there they call forever chemicals yeah. because they never go away. Yeah. Uh, and in high enough doses, they will kill you. Um, so I always tell people, if you have a concern about a water supply that has chemicals in it, you probably need to find another water supply. Yeah. Uh, because the amount of time that it'll take you to get the water out of that uh, or to get the chemicals out of that water it's, it's, it's going to be, is the juice worth the squeeze? You know, if it was an emergency, Hey, I know guys that have uh, reverse osmosis machines, they put on the counters in their kitchen, no problem. 
Uh, but um, uh, that's that's really what it takes to get the chemicals out of the water. Yeah. And now as far as other stuff, as far as your bacteria and stuff like that, I use a Berkey. And then uh, I forgot the name of the website because we run uh, my shop and my bathroom and my shop. We run it off rainwater and we run it through a uh, ceramic filters. Mm-hmm. And I bought the big canister filters. It's got six. They have uh, six candles in there. Uh, I think it's Fresh Water Systems is okay. the uh, is the name of the company, and you can buy all that stuff. So I, I bought all the stuff, all the filters, and cobbled everything together. And mm-hmm. our rainwater is a hundred percent safe to drink. I drink it all the time, and never a problem. Yeah. So. Well, most most rainwater is completely safe to drink. <laughs> so, yeah. I hate to say it, you know, you you get most of your contaminants of whatever's on your roof. Now you got a metal roof, you're you're probably going to have no problems whatsoever. But. Yeah. You know, if and you have that, an asphalt roof, then, uh, you know, the birds that land on it and do their business and whatever. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's going to that's going to be there's going to be an issue there, you know. Uh, but, um, yeah, I uh, uh, I've had uh, I have something called the water machine. It's very much like a Berkey. Uh, but uh, in fact, the guy who designed it used to work for Berkey for like 40 years. <laughs> but uh, it's uh, it uses uh, similar technology. In fact, the filters are actually made in the same. They're made in the same factory as the Berkey filters. Really? So yeah, and they're half the price. Isn't there something about Berkey? Are they going out of business or something? I've been seeing some weird stuff about them. No, there there were some legal issues. Uh mm-hmm. they were they were getting sued. Uh okay. and and then they, they were getting sued by basically uh I call them a water zealot. Uh because you know I mean unless God in God unless God made the water and put it in a cup for him and handed it to him. It was never going to be pure enough. Uh, yeah. But uh, and so he was suing them, and then the courts let, said, "Go away, you're being dumb." And so he came back like a year later and and tried to sue him again, and then he lost. He actually lost. They went, the case went to court, and then he lost. Huh. You know, um, so it was it was like you you you're claiming you're taking all this stuff out, but it's not. I've had it tested, and then you go and actually look at the guy's results, and yeah, well. He they they weren't very scientific about their tests, yeah. so. And then it is what it is. Cindy's asking about dehumidified the water you get out of a dehumidifier. There there was a company Shelly at the last festival that were selling. They were pulling is essentially a dehumidifier, and they were pulling mm-hmm. water out of the air. Remember those people? No, I don't. I'm pretty yeah. sure that they had that. I would say I would run it through some kind of filter just because. Uh, I know I've got a dehumidifier in my basement and that little catchment thing kind of gets nasty and funky. So, I mean, what water's water. I wouldn't have a problem with doing that whatsoever. That and then uh, Utah Mike said a distiller. Uh, yeah, a distiller will take a lot of the stuff like that. Yeah. Out. Yeah, I would, I would caution everybody here on live TV, never drink dehumidifier water unless you absolutely have to. Uh, and the reason is, is because it's loaded with heavy metals. Uh, it's the, the actual process of it being moved through that machine, the air sucking it out of the air, going across coils, things like that. It's loaded with heavy metals. Uh, but you can filter out heavy metals if you have a good filter, like those ceramic filters. They'll no problem. No, they'll, they'll filter out the heavy metals. Yeah. And going back on the uh, asphalt roofs, I was checking that. I've got an asphalt roof on my house, and I've got a. Uh, metal roof on my shop i was like and you hear everybody says do not drink it off an asphalt roof Mm -hmm. i searched and searched for a long time and there was a uh i think it was texas a&m did a study on asphalt roofs and they they collected off an asphalt roof and look look for the the organic or whatever the volatile organic compounds that are in the asphalt roofs and they said after i think it was like after five years there was little to no none of those chemicals in that rainwater mm-hmm. and i'm like that's cool and then they did it on a brand new roof and of course there was a lot more of it in there yeah and I, they said you probably don't need to drink that but i i've likened it as hey i would rather die of cancer in 30 years than dehydration in three days yeah exactly in a, in a survival yeah. situation well a, a a little scientific tidbit here so have you ever have you seen those commercials on tv lately where it's like we can make your roof last another five to 10 years. And there's some dude up there with a giant sprayer yep. and he's spraying the roof. He's putting the chemicals back in the asphalt. 
Yeah. So just an FYI. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Shelly's like, he can't make that up. <laughs> <laughs> Reality. Cha-ching. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm sitting here thinking, because I've read some things about that, too, and it's like after a while that, you know, the stuff that's going to hurt you is not even – you know, mm-hmm. it's kind of like with tires. After a while, the bad stuff is gone anyway. But um, <laughs> yeah, if they're extending the life of your roof, there you yep. go. <laughs> yeah, you just put the chemicals yeah. right back in it. <laughs> I'll just I'll just stick with my tin roof, and it'll be all right. There you go. I mean, it, I just looked up these water machines. These are very reasonably priced. That's, oh, you got the water machine? Yeah, the water machine. I just looked it up because I mean I've looked at Berkey's. I don't I don't yeah. have one of them. And that's I mean, they've got it listed on here for 300 bucks. That's pretty yeah. reasonable. It's really yeah. cool too. I've got the one with the stand. You don't have to have the stand. Yeah, right. you don't have to have the stand. You can put it right on your counter. Uh, but uh yeah, they their their only drawback is they're made of glass. That's I'm their only say drawback. It's cool looking because it's all made yeah. of glass. But uh, I've never had anything. I've never had a, a, a dog run into it and didn't knock it over. Um, you know, you just have to be careful when you're cleaning it. It's like anything else. Uh, from a survival standpoint, yeah, it's not very smart. But uh, from, hey, what's that in the corner of your kitchen? Oh, let me tell you about this. Well, yeah. It's nice looking. I like yeah. it. Well, you could use code local prepper and you'll save a bunch of money. <laughs> oh, cool. I can do that. I was gonna ask you if you had like yeah. a link or, or something. Yeah, if you if you go to if you go to my website, uh localprepper.net, shameless promotion, um the uh you it'll see just scroll all the way to the bottom or go to uh, what is it uh, um uh trusted products and then scroll to the bottom and you'll find a link there. Go the other there and look at it. I you know, I don't I don't normally promote on other people's channels, but you know, people that anybody who uses a Berkey, I have to tell them, unless you're using ceramic filters like you are, yeah. keep doing what you're doing because I don't think they sell ceramic filters. But the the standard carbon uh, filters that this guy sells, his name is Tom, and uh, he actually lives in Hawaii. <laughs> I've had many conversations with him. He worked for Bill, for Berkey for about 30 years. And uh, he, he was like, there's got to be a better way to do this to make it like where people would like it more. So that's what he came up with the water machine. But he um, the filters that he sells you is are the same filters that they make in the Berkey filter factory in Texas. OK. And if you check the prices on those filters, you'll be very surprised. Really? Yes. You'll be very, it's, it's, it's like, it's almost like a little hidden secret. Wow. <laughs> there, that, uh, Jordan put it in there. Code local prepper saves you another 45 bucks. Hey, wow. that, that's a, that's pretty good savings on stuff. So. Um, so let me just ask you a question about this. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm really sure. interested in getting one. Really, <laughs> Shelly's going to buy one in a minute. <laughs> like, I'm going to right click add to cart. Um, does it sweat? Like, no, it doesn't. Okay. no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't sweat. It doesn't sweat. Uh, I, I think it doesn't sweat because the glass is bubbled. Probably. Uh, but but it doesn't sweat. Uh, and people ask me about, uh, um, uh, was it uh, algae? Uh, I will get algae from time to time in the top portion of it. Uh, but it gets filtered out. And, and I only get the algae growth when I haven't cleaned it for like six months. You know, I just and and they just make it so easy. And if you do buy one, when they send you the filters, don't lose the black plug. Okay, because okay? the black plug is what you need to backwash the filters. I've only been I've been on one set of filters. They're rated for ten thousand gallons per filter, and uh, I'm I'm still on my first set of filters. How long have you had it? I don't know, two years. Wow. Yeah. They start. Oh, yeah. They start to get. They the things start to drip a little slowly, and I just back flush it and 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 put it back. Put it back together and fill it up, and in the morning it's full. And we had to do. Uh, we had to do mine in the shop. We didn't use it for a while, and uh, the ceramic filters kind of got all gunky. So we just yeah. pulled. We pulled the big cap off of it, unscrewed the filters out, and I took them outside. And they got a brush that comes with mm-hmm. it to scrub them. We scrubbed. Yeah. Uh, backwashed it and all that, and then man, it ran great. Oh yeah, oh yeah. 
And so Chile, does, this thing, does this thing filter out like um, chlorine and fluoride and all that stuff no, that's in your municipal no, water? Okay. No, it just fills out all the bad stuff that'll kill you if you put pond water in pond, pond water in it. Gotcha. All right. Cindy was asking, can you buy your own stainless steel pots and make a Berkeley equivalent in a spigot? Oh, in a heartbeat. But what you have to do is make sure that whatever filters you, you buy, make sure that, that whatever pot you're making it out of, it, uh, um, it's, t it's tall enough and deep enough to hold the filters. Like, for instance, the, the filters that we're talking about, they're, they're nine-inch filters. They make different sizes ones. You know? so, and if you put a filter inside of a container – and you don't like when when the carbon fi when carbon filters dry out or even when ceramic filters dry out um they they stop filtering they stop allowing the those those that porous action to work properly so if you have a filter that is too long say say you buy say you use like one of those um what's um you can go to Walmart go to and I'm trying to, to, you can buy buckets, like five gallon buckets that are only three gallons. And if you try to put a nine inch Berkey filter into that, making your own, it won't, it won't work. It won't work because you're going to have half the filter sticking up out of it. Yeah. You know, so and you want to be able to start with that filter submerged. That's why you always prime your filters first anyway. Uh, that way you have that constant water flow. Nothing dries out. Now, eventually you'll, you, it, eventually it won't matter. Okay. But just make sure that the size filter will fit in whatever size bucket that, you, that you're trying to use or whatever si size can or whatever it is you're trying to use. But, yeah, you can you can buy all the parts at Lowe's and make your own and buy some filters. No problem. Yeah. And there's Cindy, there's tons of YouTube videos. I've seen tons of videos, guys making them out of food grade five gallon buckets. Yep. And I will see. Uh, I don't have it pulled up right now, but I'll see if I can find. Uh, now, does your LP, does that company uh, sell just the filters that you're dealing with? They do. Okay. They do. They're yeah, $75 yeah. for two. Yeah, yeah, you can get those filters, or I'll see if I can find the website where I bought the ceramics that I've got in my shop. And uh, I'll see I'll, I'll see if I can get that and put it in the description uh, tomorrow for everybody. The ones on here aren't listed as ceramic. They're black carbon. Yeah, yeah. they don't sell ceramic filters. Okay. Man, we've touched everything. We've touched solar. The only thing we hadn't talked about is pew pews yet. So pew pews. Pew pew yeah. pew, 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 pew. We'll try to get we'll, well try to get. we kinda wanna stay on here, so maybe we yeah. shouldn't talk about pew pews. <laughs> we get smacked on the wrist about that. So lower now if you touch one during a live, they automatically like kick you off from what yep. I'm no. Yep. no 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 nothing nothing of that category can be used, shown, talked about anything on, on live streams. You yeah. can probably get away with talking about it a little bit, but as long as you're not too descriptive, you're probably okay. Yeah. Let's just say this. If you think you have enough, you probably don't have enough. So we'll just leave it at that. Yeah. Um, LP, you're going to be talking about Preparedness 101 at the festival. Can you give us some highlights? We obviously don't want you to go into it because we want everybody to come and hear you at the festival, right? <laughs> but can you give us some highlights of what you're going to be discussing under that? Um, yeah. Oh, I mean, I, I tend to focus on the, you know, the 101, that's the title we came up with. And, uh, you know, I tend to focus on the basics of preparedness and then, then, uh, to branch out from there, you know, the, in the simplest terms, you know, water, food, security, everything else after that is, is icing on the cake. It's just going to make your life better. You know, my focus is to thrive, not survive. I've been taught how to survive. I've survived. Survival sucks. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you if you think that you're going to have a great life when you're sticking your little blue straw into a mud puddle, you know, <laughs> and you're laying on the ground, you're not going to have a good day. Yeah. <laughs> right. You're going to survive, but you are not going to be thriving. You know. Um, and 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 you know, I'll cover different things that that can make you can step up from that. You know. Um, but uh, and make your life a thousand times easier with some of the some of the, the simplest things that people just don't even think about, uh, you know. And then, it, you know, if uh, if if you want to talk about food, you know, we talked about the six can method. Uh, that's that's key to get getting started. Uh, and then um, uh, and like I said, because we don't want to give it all away, you know, 
Uh, and then obviously security. Security can mean lots of different things. It can be mean it could be something as simple as uh, let's see. Uh, let me let me get in the in the, in the uh, in in the description of this video. It says like I'm going to be giving away all these tips and tricks. <laughs> all right. Go to Walmart. Go to Walmart and buy uh, a single pack of a single set of man size socks. Okay, it's the cheapest ones you can find. Then go to uh, go down to the to the uh, the sporting goods aisle and buy yourself a um, 24 inch t-ball bat by the pinkest one you can find it's not gonna matter then take it home put the sock over that t-ball bat and put a rubber band on it that's your new piece of security for all these people that live in places where they can't have pew pews i don't know if you've ever been hit with anything like that but most people don't get up yeah. you put the sock on it in case you have some ninja you come up against and he just goes and grabs that sucker. So when he goes to try and grab it or pull it away from you, it slides right out of his hands because of the sock. Good idea. That's awesome. <laughs> we never thought of that. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. And it's not huge. And oh, by the way, most baseball bats uh, or softball bats in most cases are like 36 inches long. Yeah. You try to wheel that thing going down a hallway, it's not going to happen. So... Just little things like that, little tidbits, little little things that I've learned over the years is, is the kind of stuff we'll talk about, you know. And then, you know, obviously there'll be other things that we'll get into, you know, everything from water purification. I mean, I, I figure I've got 45 minutes to talk about stuff and I can talk. <laughs> well, we've done a good job talking right now. Yeah. People well, were actually asking me, like, is this going to be exactly what you're going to talk about? Like they were like going to be like hitting the record button and stuff. And I was like, <laughs> We're going to talk about a lot of stuff. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Hey, I, I'm super appreciative of all your people coming over here and uh, hanging out with us tonight. We've had a good conversation. Uh, guys, Go also go check out. I appreciate you being here. Check out Shelly's channel. It's Two Old Crows Homestead. And then check out my channel, which is Kentucky Sustainable Living. And then we've got our podcast also, which is Homestead HQ. We're doing those. They drop on Mondays and Thursdays is when they drop. And uh, we're doing... Pretty much we're trying to do, uh, and we'll do one one a week, just Shelly and I talking about different stuff. And then as the festival gets closer, we're going to be interviewing our speakers each week. So, you know, LP's on here. He's speaking at our event. Next week we'll have somebody else that's going to speak, and that's going to be alive and on the podcast also. So, Shelly, run down some of the festival stuff, because I know you've got it right in front of you. I just opened up my notebook because I knew you were going to ask me. <laughs> so um, some of the speakers that we have coming besides local prepper is um, we're going to have William Bond. He's going to be talking about permaculture on the homestead. We're going to have um, Bill Stoker. We did a video with him, what, a, two weeks ago? Yeah. Um, he's going to be talking Stoker, about homestead. Stokermatic. Yeah, Stokermatic. <clears throat> Sean Terrio is going to be talking about cybersecurity. If you want to get unplugged from the matrix, you need to come hear him. Randall White is going to be talking about tree grafting. He's also going to have a booth set up where he'll be doing demonstrations and teaching you about that. I can't wait to meet him because this is one of those skills that I want to know. Um, before, let me go back. I, I don't know if she's still on here or not, but... Ann Garvey was talking earlier and she was talking about all the skills that she needed to learn and just start making a list like tree grafting is one of those skills on my list that I want to learn how to do. Just start making a list and taking a bite one bite at a time. Leslie Gossett is going to be talking about um, she's going to be doing an herbal walk. She's also going to have a demonstration booth set up where you can go make tinctures and take stuff home. Kowalski Mountain is going to be talking about beekeeping Brian and Susan from s &B Radio is going to be talking about communications and setting up a communication plan. Um, let's see. Chuck Peoples is going to be there talking about all the medical things. If you want to learn everything, medical is the, you need medical. Like it's the thing that you need. You might save all the cans and save all the pew pews and have all of that stuff. But if you don't know how to fix basic things, like an infection or a gash or something, you know, a cut that needs more maintenance than, you know, just a Band-Aid. You need to know medical. Um, 
Chuck's class that I went to, I have used that training. I don't even know how many times now, probably a dozen times since the two years ago when I took that class. Um, Jeff Smith is going to be talking about what, um, if you got fence riders in your life, you know, those people that say, Hey, if the shit hits the fan, I'm going to come to your house. <laughs> and you're going, what? <laughs> if you're trying to figure out, you know, how to deal with that or, you know, the people that maybe you do want to come to your house and you can't convince them that it's something that they need to be worried about. Jeff's going to be talking about that and addressing that. And then Byron Russell is going to be doing drone defense and chronically healthy is going to be there talking about healthy living. I and think you met, I everybody you met, you missed angry prepper is going to be there. He is at the top of my list. And I started with William angry <laughs> prepper is going to be there. Yes. He's yeah. going to, he's, he's coming down from New York and he's going to spend the weekend with us. And I can't wait to see him again. And he makes that drive super fast. He told me he's driving like over a hundred sometimes. And I'm like, oh my God. I was like, how are you getting by with that? He's like, I don't know. So I don't know that he should be driving through Redneck Appalachia doing that. No, that's not. <laughs> he, he said there's a couple spots that he didn't want to stop. And I was like, I don't blame you. He probably just to blow through there. Um, we're also going to have some demonstrations set up during the festival. Um, Angie from. Grumpy Acres is going to be demonstrating fermenting. Lawrence, our Lawrence from Kentucky Sustainable Living, is going to be demonstrating canning the whole two days. Um, Flomaton Famous, the tree guy, he's going to be doing grafting. And then uh, Leslie's going to be doing tinctures. So, yeah, come. you'll be able to come and meet these people and ask them questions and talk to them. Um, it's, it's just, it's great. Come and see them. Yeah, and you can get... The website is KentuckySustainableLiving.com. That's where you can get you can look at all the info. You can get your tickets. There's also some workshops on Friday before. We've got the uh, medical workshop. We've got the, uh, Leslie's doing a, an herbal workshop. We're doing a radio uh, workshop and then a uh, canning workshop on Friday that uh, you can you can come to. Those are extra workshops that you can come to on it. And then Saturday night, we're doing a charity dinner for Caleb House, which is Bear Independence uh, TJ. Uh, Caleb, Caleb House is a rehabilitation center for the uh, children that they uh, rescue out of sex trafficking rings. They're building it, so we're having a charity dinner. All our speakers will be there Saturday night, so if you want to come hang out, eat dinner with LP and all the other speakers, you can have dinner with us and uh, hang out for the night. We're going to have some good bourbon and probably some beer so we can kick back and relax and raise some money for probably the best cause that I can think of, honestly. So, so go check all of that out at KentuckySustainableLiving.com. If you use uh, promo code EMAIL25, you can get your tickets for 25 bucks right now, and children 17 and under are free. LP, tell everybody where they can find you at. And uh, then we'll kind of close this deal out for the night. They can't. They can't find me anywhere. All right. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can look, you, listen, go, just hit the Google machine and type local prepper, all one word. I got like four pages worth of stuff there. <laughs> so, <laughs> and if that confuses you, go to localprepper.net and you'll be able to see all that there. And if you're searching on the YouTube, uh, just local prepper, all one word. All right. Awesome. And guys, we appreciate y'all being on here and we will hopefully see a bunch of y'all at the festival. LP, thanks for being on here. Shelly, tell everybody bye. Bye. <laughs>